Hello. So I took a poll on my Instagram if people would listen to No Spoilers on YouTube because I'm like, you know what? It's 2022. Let me elevate, do something new with my content. And everyone said yes. So here I am. I will be having no spoilers on YouTube. And also you can listen to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Before we get started, um, make sure you follow me on my Instagram and TikTok at the Brook J, the Brook J. Um, subscribe and like and comment on this video because eventually I want to monetize and like do this full time and not have to sling drinks. Like, isn't that the goal here? So without further ado. Welcome to No Spoilers, where I tell you all the movies and TV shows you need to know about, and I'll tell you all you need to know without knowing it all. So today, we are going to talk about Insecure. <sighs> I got so sad about that, I forgot what else I was going to say. Okay, we're going to talk about Insecure. We're going to talk about This Is Us and Spider-Man No Way Home. But before we get started, get your Diet Coke. And enjoy it with me. Let's go on a ride, guys. So Insecure. Insecure has ruined my life. And I feel like a lot of people, there are a lot of people who are turned on to the show and then there's like a ton of people who know and never like watch the show. And I'm just like, but like why? It's so amazing. So let me start over. So so Insecure was started by Issa Rae, who created The Misadventures of an Awkward Black Girl on YouTube as a YouTube series. And she eventually got with the showrunner Prentice Penny and banded with HBO and created the show called Insecure, which stars Yvonne Orji, who plays her best friend Molly, uh, Jay Ellis, who plays Lawrence. Um, we have Natasha Rothwell, who plays Kelly. And we have Amanda Seals, who plays Tiffany. So, like, why do you need to watch this show? So, a lot that Issa Rae talks about is how shows like Sex and the City, uh, Seinfeld, like, all have these love letters to New York. We have so many shows that have to do with people, love, and relationships, and lives going on in New York. And she was like, well... I want to create my love letter to Los Angeles and living in Los Angeles, I've enjoyed watching the show a lot because I'm like, oh my gosh, wow, like I didn't even realize that was there or that was there or I recognize this place or that place. One time I was driving around and I I drove past We Got Y'all, which I'll got get you I'll get into in a second. And it was just so cool because now like there's an apartment complex that's in the first two seasons of the show and now it's like become like the Hollywood sign. It's like freaking awesome. So Insecure is about an insecure lady named Issa D and it follows basically her relationships and friendships um, while being broke working at a nonprofit in Los Angeles and the reason why you need to watch the show is because it's not only is it so amazing for black people, because I feel like for the first time in a long time, it's a show that doesn't just show black people in these like very dramatic and like abused situations and it's like there's comedy involved, like sure there's drama and there's things, but like she might not have a lot of money, but then you have her best friend, Molly, who's a lawyer and she's well established and she lives downtown Los Angeles and she got her money. She got her thing. She got a nice car. And it just it shows a variety of how amazing black people are instead of just keeping them in this little box. And it also shows a lot about uh, Inglewood, which is an area of Los Angeles that doesn't get a lot of 
show for being like a, an up and coming place, it, it gets like a semi bad rap um, because that's kind of what they do with black people in the media. Um, but that's a different discussion. It also deals with like real life situations. I mean, you have not only the boyfriend breakups, the the rebounds, the hot guy that you wish that you dated, but now you're stuck in a relationship. Um, but there's like so many, there's like friend breakups. There's, you know, breakups with your career and trying to figure out like who you are. Like it is an all encompassing show that has real life situations. Like it's not all about the drama. It's not all about the comedy, but it brings in just being insecure with yourself and trying to figure it out. And it's just like so realistic and it like really touches your heart. But not only that, but her, the music that they chose for this show, I believe Solange Knowles is also a part of the team that chooses music for this show. But not only do they choose amazing music and amazing music that fits the theme of each episode, they also try to find up and coming artists for this show. And it's sometimes the first song that has ever been used on a larger platform of media for some of these artists. And that's, as a creator myself, I think that's just like so amazing. But this show just has it all. Issa, Issa D in the show, um, loves to rap, loves to freestyle. And there's parts in the show where she'll be talking to herself and she'll try to figure out a rap. And it's literally like just, it can be awkward, it can be funny, it can be sad, whatever is like going on in her life, like you can relate to her so much. I I guarantee you no, I guarantee you in any part of your life, you can relate to something that Issa has gone through. And also then you have Molly. You have Molly who, I relate to Molly in a lot of ways because I mean, super type A, kind of self sabotage like looking for the perfect this, looking for the perfect fairy tale this, and like you seem to not be able to keep it together because your expectations are in one way when you should really just kind of be relaxed in this way. And I think she's just a perfect opposite of Issa. And, and their friendship is just so beautiful. I love that we see the ebbs and flows in friendships. I mean, I mean, one big part of the show is also showing the ebbs and flows of your friendships and as we're getting older. And throughout the seasons, you see Issa and Molly's friendship change and ebb and flow. And even with Tiffany and Kelly, who are more of the side characters, but you see them going through issues too. I mean, there's, there's some pivotal moments that happen in Tiffany's life and Kelly will be like oh like why didn't you tell me why didn't you this um you know Issa will keep secrets from Molly Molly will keep secrets from Issa and and you know as you get older sometimes you grow apart sometimes you come back together sometimes you're in a weird place and they handle it so so delicately but they handle it so real that it's like I just love I love that every episode I felt like I have had a similar situation happen to me too. So let's talk about Lawrence. So Lawrence is Issa's longtime boyfriend. And when we open up the show, he is on unemployment and Issa is the only one basically supporting them, working at a nonprofit that also doesn't pay very well. And that's kind of how we open up with the show. And we... What was cool about this was when you first start watching the show, you think that maybe Lawrence is like a a side character and is in, in his own right. But for men watching the show, because it's not, I wouldn't say like a chick flick or a chick film. I feel like men and women can both watch the show and have a lot of things to relate to. And it, it was really cool watching Lawrence and some of the other men in the show grow with their own insecurities with being a man living in America, a black man living in America. And um, I just think that's just like, it was really cool to see Lawrence grow. But I loved the push and pull with all of Issa's relationships. Like when you can get my heart to start beating during a show, 
that means like the writing is right, like everything is right, the lines are correct. Um, and it just makes you feel good. It makes you mad. It makes you angry. You know, you don't want someone to go back to somebody else. You know that that person ain't ish and they shouldn't go back to that person, but you're rooting for them to get back together because they're soulmates. Like it has everything and it's just, it's just an all around amazing show. It has so much depth. The writing is amazing. It's one of those shows that like, we all were dying for the show to be an hour long because sometimes you would get to the 28 minutes and 30 seconds of the show and it would just end and you're like, why? And you're just like, we all complained on the internet to Issa and she was like, y'all, like HBO told us that we only have this amount of time to do the show, so y'all need to stop complaining. I can't do anything about it. So, um, yeah. It's an amazing show. Check it out. It just ended uh, right after Christmas. So no time like the present. Be in with the Insecure crowd. And I think you should watch Insecure. It is on HBO. Um, you won't regret it. Uh, people who love music, you will it, will. it will be. It will be the show for you. Um, people who love dry humor like me will love it. People who love sarcasm, um, you'll absolutely love the show. So definitely watch Insecure. It's on HBO. Check it out. Let me know if you watch it and get back to me. So it's really hard for me to talk about This Is Us because this show has um, completely jolted my entire uh, soul and I feel like I could not possibly adequately tell you how amazing this show is so I like I just hope that you trust me that you need to watch it before this series ends this year because it's coming back in January and you need to get on the this is us train before it ends um so you could feel all the feels that we are feeling with that being said this is us is an amazing show on NBC it's been on since 2016. So it stars uh, Milo Ventimiglia, Jack Pearson, Mandy Moore, Rebecca Pearson, Sterling K. Brown, Randall Pearson. By the way, this is a show about the Pearsons. If you didn't notice, Christy Metz as Kate Pearson, Justin Hartley as Kevin Pearson. So this show is amazing, not only because of the acting and the storylines, but the writing is so so amazing that like I don't understand like my brain can't I can't guess I can't comprehend like I don't even know how these writers even get to the places that they go it's so revolutionary and it's nothing like this has ever been done and nothing like this probably will ever be done again because it, it's just amazing and I would like to take a second to recognize Jazz Waters who unfortunately passed away during quarantine um in 2020, she was one of the amazing writers. She was a black writer in, in Hollywood, and um, she's definitely missed. So this show is one of those hard shows to not spoil because even the premise of the show is so important for you to find out on your own. Um, but what I will say is that there are multiple time periods going on all in the same episode yet so strategically and weaved so perfectly it all fits together and tells the story seamlessly i mean i don't understand how they do it so the adults in the show are in present day they also show the future they show when the children were teenagers. They show when the children were kids and babies. They show when the parents were kids, when they were teenagers, when they were present time, when they're older. And then they show their parents when they were younger and when they were having children. Does this make sense? Like it's it goes through so many time periods just so seamlessly yet tells the story. And the reason why this is important and essential to watching the show is because sometimes you'll be watching the show and it'll be in present day. And there's information 
that you might already know that the characters in the present day don't know yet. Or there's something that happened in the past that you watching as a viewer in the present time don't know yet. But the characters already know that this happened. And you get little blimps and pieces of it as the show goes on. But wait, not done yet, folks. Even when you find out these pieces of info that might have happened in the past that now you know in the future and that has come full circle, it's not over yet. Because something now happens and it keeps going. It doesn't matter. The story just keeps going. You find out twists and turns and plot lines throughout this show and you think like, oh, now that I know this information, the show can't possibly keep going on. No, it keeps going. Because now that you have that information, everything that happens in the future is now based on this information that you have that happened 30 years ago. And that's how you watch the show. Like, it's, it is, I don't know. Every time, so the show's ending violin at the end, it goes, Anyways, when every time that comes on, I am either like this at the TV or like I am crying. Um, so yeah, I don't know. If that if this reaction to this show doesn't make you want to watch the show, I don't know it will because, and that's just the writing, guys. This is just the premise of the show. Um, and basically it's, it's, it's really just life. It's, it's really, it's about family. Um, it's about mixed families. It's about uh, race. It's about growing older. Um, it's about holding grudges. It's about traumatic experiences that you might be holding on to. It's about projecting. It's about growth. There's. Uh, it's about mental health. It's about abandonment. It's about your career. It's about self-image. Um, all these characters, no matter what age they might be at, I feel like a lot of us can take little pieces of these characters and really understand. Like, the character that I really, really can relate to on so many of these episodes is Randall Pearson, um, because he's the character that kind of deals with mental health issues throughout the show, and it was brought to light on national television. And when this first came out, it was 2016. I mean, I think the only thing that was really going on with mental health was 13 Reasons Why, which was very trigger-inducing. So I don't know if that was, like, the best example of how to deal with mental health um, in the past five or six years. But this show brings it up in such a beautiful way that it's not necessarily triggering but it's making you aware but like also showing compassion but also like showing giving so much empathy to this character and I feel I see myself in this character a lot I mean um he's a person that feels like he has to have it together all the time and he's the person in his family that deals with his own mental health issues and the way Sterling K. Brown oh, performs this, like it's, I can't. I mean, he gets me every time. Um, I mean, everyone does, but man, he really gets me. So this show has been on since 2016 and it's ending this January, and I'm so sad. So I really want you to get on This Is Us Train. It's on NBC, and, you know, watch it and be a part of This Is Us family. Be a part of the conversations. Be a part of all the things. I don't know if you're on Reddit or Twitter or wherever you are, but it's it's an experience. Every episode is an experience. Uh, all the episodes are about an hour long, and... 
you know, get your, get your tissues ready, but like also be ready to laugh and be able to get angry and be able to empathize, like all the feels, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to watch this as us. It looks so depressing or whatever. And it's like, it's not even that it's depressing. It's that it like, it makes you feel, it makes you think, it makes you wonder, it makes you grow in yourself and like, you know, black mirror you like, oh, this, this something might be resonating with me with this story. Like maybe I should think about it. Like, why am I reacting to it this way? And I love, I love art that I react to. If I'm reacting to it, that means that it's, it's good art. So watch This Is Us. Let me know what you think about it. Last but certainly not least, we're going to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay, so I had a friend, I had a few friends during Christmas that were like, oh, are you going to watch the new Spider-Man movie? And like, it's funny that like I have, I'm doing videos on like movies and TV because honestly, I don't really watch Spider-Man. I am so behind on the Marvel movies. Um, I just finally finished Endgame and I finally figured out what happens at the end of Endgame but I was real behind and you know I was like you know what this looks really good and like the box office is killing like what is it like almost at like Titanic numbers like it's selling like crazy and in a time where people are still not fully all the way going back to the movies yet I mean like even West Side Story didn't have these types of numbers, but that's a new con- that's another conversation. So obviously Spider-Man is like growing the charts. It's amazing on Rotten Tomatoes. The critics love it, which is always rare and sometimes completely off from what the audience loves. But it was doing amazing. So when I was back at home in Alaska, I was like, let's go watch Spider-Man. And I kept asking my friends, I was like, how updated do I need to know? to watch this movie because I haven't watched a Marvel movie in a long time, which if you didn't know, when Spider-Man first came out with Tobey Maguire and then it went to Andrew Garfield and then it went to Tom Holland. When it went to Tom Holland, rights and stuff got bought and it went into Marvel slash, I believe, Sony Entertainment. And... Now Spider-Man is where it should be in the Marvel Universe. So now he's in the Avengers movies, et cetera, et cetera. So everything's kind of shifted. Um, so I'm like, do I need to know, do I have to have seen like the Spider-Man movies? And some of my friends were like, ah, you probably should probably, you know, see this movie or see that movie. I didn't care. I was like, let me just go watch it. Like if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. It's whatever. It should it if it's that good of a movie, it should just stand alone on its own and completely ruin my life. Oh. It stood alone and ruined my life. So I watched the Toby Maguire ones when I was like 10. I think I only watched the first one and like half of the second one. I think there was a third one that came out. I could be wrong. I think there is. There's a Spider-Man 3. I'm not sure. Um, The Andrew Garfield ones with Emma Stone. I didn't watch any of those. No clue what happens. Um, But I can assume, I can assume what happens in a superhero movie. Um, Tom Holland comes around. Haven't watched any of his. I did see him when I was watching a part of Iron Man, when I was watching uh, a few of the other Avengers movies. I've seen him, knew what he was about. Cool. A few years ago, I watched Into the Spider-Verse, and that movie actually gave me, like, a grasp on what was going on in the Spider-Verse. So the Spider-Verse is basically a... Not the Spider-Verse. Watching the Spider-Verse, you learn about the multiverse, which is multiple multiple dimension, which is a theory that there's multiple dimensions happening at all times. So if there is a me, that means there is a me in another dimension, so on and so forth, like limited, unlimited dimensions here. So I'm watching the film and only knowing like a few things that, about Spider-Man that I've seen or have heard, 
I laughed. I was about to cry. I even got the Easter eggs that I shouldn't have gotten, but the way that it was written so well, I was like, oh my gosh, I know that this meant a lot to Spider-Man. Um, so it involves bringing in, like, seamlessly... The fact that I haven't seen Tobey Maguire in anything in so long. And the fact that I saw him again, I was like, Toby! It's Toby! And then Andrew Garfield came in and I was just like, The Multiverse! This movie left me speechless because not, it was, it was funny. It was written so well that there were, there's a part of the movie where we're watching the characters have a dialogue. And I swear, watching this as an actor, I wonder if they just put this, I wonder if they just said action and just let them play. I mean, this whole thing seems so um, improv that it was just so like realistic and real and just honest. And like, they were just talking and like, just having guy time. And it was just, it was so cool to watch because I think, one thing that this movie does do is notices the fact that this is a different dimension than the other ones, obviously. But it wasn't this like, oh, we're going to pretend like that never happened and just have Tom Holland's life as like the important part of this movie. It was like, oh no, like all these other... All these other ones were getting paid homage to, but also they were integral parts to this whole movie. And it was just so funny. It was clever. There was just little Easter eggs. Like there's a lot of action packed. There's so many great fight scenes. Um, it was amazing. Like everyone needs to see this movie. And I can tell you from a person who is not updated with everything going on in Marvel or even just the Spider-Man movies alone, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was perfect. I don't know. Like, I think this is like the first Marvel film that I think should get an Oscar. Like, what is this? Like, the, it is that good, guys. You need to watch this movie. If you haven't seen it yet, go buy a ticket. Give Zendaya and Tom Holland their money. Like, go go to the movie theater and go watch this film. You will not regret it, even if you are a little behind. Because I was worried about that, and it honestly ended up being great. It ended up being fine. Because it was so well written that they were able to kind of tell you what they were talking about without it being, like, cheesy or lame. So... There, I, I didn't skip a beat. I knew exactly what was going on. And even like, for instance, I haven't watched Doctor Strange yet. I know who Doctor Strange is, but I haven't watched the movie on its own. I didn't need to be updated what was going on in his life. I knew exactly what Doctor Strange was supposed to be doing in that movie. His character's great. Um, and that end scene, guys. If you're going to watch this for anything, watch this for that very last scene. And this movie is so much about redemption and like making it right. And it felt so, so good, especially being a kid and watching the Tobey Maguire films and seeing how those directors and writers took on his character as Spider-Man and then having them kind of change a few things, but like adding redemption to him, to his story and not his story. It's like all the Spider-Man story, you know? And, oh, you know, it was just great. Brotherhood. It's funny. Kids will love it. Parents will love it. I think, I think things are, I love art that can be directed and geared towards kids and adults because I love I, I miss the days when I could watch cartoons when I was a kid with my parents, but they would also enjoy it. It reminded me of that. It really reminded me of that. There were kids in the audience, there were adults in the audience, and we were all laughing. The kids were probably laughing at things that they didn't realize, but it was still funny. And that, it could stand alone and be awesome on its own. I now need to go rewatch because of the MJ um, storyline. I need to go back and watch the, the, the few others of Tom Holland just so I'm a little updated. But you know what? It made me like want to go binge watch Spider-Man. Like 
I was like, I need to know everything about Tom Holland Spider-Man like right now. I am so excited and so jazzed about this. I even told a friend and I'm willing this. I'm like, my goal now is to be a superhero in the Marvel universe. Like that is one of my goals now. They have turned superheroes into Oscar worthy acting films like superhero movies right like when I think of a superhero movie I think of Catwoman and I love Holly Berry but I think of Catwoman and I think of Batman Forever but Marvel has completely changed the game and this movie it should be the first superhero movie that wins an Oscar because the acting was amazing. The writing was amazing. I mean, just, it was just amazing. And you need to go watch it. And that is really all I can say because it is, it, it will speak for itself, honey. I, I think, I think I am done. It, you killed it, Marvel. You killed it. Also, don't be that weirdo who doesn't stay for the end of the credits. I think what they're, catching on to is that people want to see the credits hurry up. So actually the credits for this movie were only like a few minutes long and it kind of got to the end to show you what was going to happen next. So that was kind of funny because I feel like they're like, oh, everyone's going to wait. Because I remember when like the first Avengers came out, the credits were like five minutes long and everyone's like, ah, I feel like the credits were like three minutes long in this movie. So I did have to, I did have to ask a friend what the meaning of the clip after the credits meant but it's okay um because now I know and now I know what's gonna happen and then immediately when I went home I went to go watch Endgame so I could be updated on what was happening in the world um and now I know and now we're great but it doesn't matter it was so good all right, well, thanks for joining me for this episode of No Spoilers. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. And let me know if you've seen any of these shows or after you've watched these shows, what you think about them. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.